turning on the recording. Sir, I started. Yeah. Okay. Is it like you can also record? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, individually, we can record. Also, you can record and then post it on the Google, Google Drive in the classroom. Sir. Okay. If that's the case, then uh, I think uh, one of you can take the responsibility to record it and upload it. Uh, because, uh, but if I, if any of the students uh, record it, sir, then you have to give the permission to share it. Otherwise, it will be lost from your Google Drive. Yeah, I, I'll do that. Okay, I'll do that. Uh, I mean, if it is a CRR, any student can do so. Just please uh, send me an email. I'll give you permission to upload it. Okay, so please record. Okay, uh, now we will begin our presentation. Uh, did you complete this, this slide? I, I think we completed, right? Yes, yes. Did you ca go up to okay. so cable, the cable slide? Yes, you completed. Cable slide, we completed. Okay. Thank you. Sir, I have a question regarding the, uh, the yeah. previous question. Sir, mm -hmm. uh, you are okay. talking about the cable right. length. Sir, you are talking about the cable length. Yeah. So what's right. actually that mean? Sir, is it like within this cable length, the signal will be uh, like diode or something else? Yeah, 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 that's the case. In any kind of, uh, there, there are actually two things here. Uh, normally, you mean that the signal, signal attenuates in any kind of medium. So, uh, when it uh, attenuates to a very low level, you can no longer uh, retrieve the information from the signal. And uh, so there is a particular length of the cable through which, with uh, considering uh, some standard level of transmission power, uh, you assume that the uh, power at the receiving end actually gives you how much loss, what, what percentage of loss of transmit power you have in the cable. So, in terms of dB, if you are not yet familiar with dB, uh, you will be uh, later in this course. So, uh, so depending on that, uh, it gives you a particular length that uh, this uh, over this this is the maximum length you can use. Okay, and uh, beyond that, the power at the receiving end will be too low. So that's the typical way to declare the maximum length of the cable. But of course, you can still run it longer because you can regenerate the signal at the other end and then again use the same cable. Okay. So this type of regenerator or repeaters are commonly used when you are not uh, cover a long length uh, so it's actually okay, okay. but uh, uh, nevertheless if you have a longer cable length then you need fewer repeaters on the way another uh, uh, I mean tricky part here is that in the case of Ethernet okay it also relates to delay. <coughs> delay, uh, I mean, how much latency you have. Okay. Uh, because the, in the case of, if you're familiar with Ethernet, then you know that uh, the signal, mm -hmm. you just transmit every, I mean, um, it's open to everybody connected 
to the to the particular part of the network so they all uh, i mean every user listen to the medium condition i mean you are connected to i mean your ethernet connect card is connected to the to the hub using the cable so you just listen to listen the condition of the line if there is no signal okay then you assume that nobody else is transmitting so then you start transmitting you put your packet on the line <clears throat> but what may happen somebody else actually started transmitting but because of the latency you i mean his signal was yet to get to yourself okay his signal didn't arrive your point uh, until then so you thought the line was free but the line was actually not free somebody else started transmitting okay i mean where you are when you are connected to hub it's like you all are connected to the same medium but the delay over the line can uh make you feel that uh, somebody i mean it is free although it is not uh so you start transmitting so what happens there is a collision okay so you both are, are actually transmitting and uh, you both fail okay so then the protocol uh, gives you a bad end of back off period you both back off and this back off period will probably be different for you and so when you retransmit uh, i mean it this timing the timing for retransmission will be different for you too so next time most likely you will be successful in transmission but again of course every time you transmit you need to listen to the line condition so here the second uh, parameter okay, or criterion for you to select the maximum length is the delay of the i mean uh, i mean the trans delay of the signal over the line okay so that also gives you um, the maximum length that you can use okay so if it is too far then uh, i mean this problem can be uh, even more severe okay so if for the for a further guy it will be even more difficult for you to understand that uh, i mean if i mean there is there are more chances to get into this kind of problem okay so anyway so basically the two reason and the two criteria are the um, uh, the attenuation in the line or losing power in the line <coughs> and secondly the uh, latency <coughs> of the signal okay <coughs> so anyway in our uh, i think we can begin our third presentation today but i must welcome your questions when you ask uh, i mean uh, sometimes you address something which i i should have done okay uh and that that helps uh, uh the whole class okay this time uh we'll be introduced to the two basic types of uh wireless link or radio link namely um LOS and non LOS so in the case of wireless communication how does it happen you launch an electromagnetic wave okay using an antenna <coughs> and that's the transmitting side uh, at the receiving end another antenna catches the signal so the signal is in the form of electromagnetic wave and it is also called radio wave and the link you establish between the two antennas are called uh, is called radio link <laughs> this radio wave 
is carrying your information okay that's why you have established the link and uh, remember that the end devices at the two sides okay uh, are transmit are antennas like them okay so establish a link between them uh, you can see my uh, presentation right now i'm showing los yes, and non los yes, okay <coughs> so the if you have a link like uh, i mean just assume that if the two antennas had eyes okay uh, then they could see each other if there is no obstacle in between and they are put in a line <laughs> okay the way you set up is that they face uh, to each other so, and uh, there is no obstacle on the way so if that is the case then it is, you have a line of sight link between them you you can really draw a straight line between them okay for this type of communication you use the term line of sight or los uh, the uh, i mean there are many examples around like whenever you see large uh, dish antennas okay uh, it's using los type of communication satellite communication is the best example okay of course i mean there is no obstacle in between normally uh, the other option is non los like your cellular phone okay you probably uh, are inside home now so uh, the base station uh, you can't see but it is still communicating and uh, you uh, I mean there are many other examples like TV radio all these are non LOS uh, so uh, the, there can be partial abstraction or complete abstraction but in both, both cases is called non LOS communication but it is uh, definitely amazing how you have a communication uh, when there is no direct link radio link okay. uh, when I was a young kid or okay I mean I used to get surprised how the television works at home so what I did uh, I closed all the all the windows and doors in the room where we had our TV okay now we don't have any tv at our home but when i was a uh, young boy we had so we uh, as i closed everything <coughs> and then turned on the tv and i found that it was still working so how things are coming to the tv i mean is so surprised <laughs> so the answer is that there are four mechanisms uh, that the uh, electromagnetic wave uses to get to your home or to different places so these are <coughs> reflection penetration diffraction and scattering so, uh, we'll uh, look into them in more detail later one by one we'll touch uh, uh, every item here but uh, the figure at the bottom probably uh, gives you a quick explanation what they are in the case of diffraction you have a uh, I mean from an age okay like uh, I just have a quick uh, uh, definition type of description here that in the case of penetration uh, you have I mean the say, sir, are you um, changing the slide? Are you changing the slide? The slide is still on the first page. Yes, sir. Oh really? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Man, how is that?
now what can you say uh, yes sir uh, yes, now sir, we can see it's a different yes. okay when i started presenting it uh, opened a new window but uh, zoom captures the new window itself but uh, this google meet doesn't now i understand so these are the slides i was going through uh okay first uh the radio link or radio wave okay then uh, transmitting and receiving antennas facing each other okay and then uh, los and non los okay so in the case of los the antennas face each other in the case of case of non los you may i mean it depends you may sometimes still face uh, so that a specific antenna may be facing your transmitting antenna okay so they may face each other but there may be some obstruction on the way so it is non los or there may not be any obstruction but you are not facing each other the two antennas are not facing each other it is still non los okay so uh the bottom line is you cannot draw a straight line between them when you uh consider the direction of the antenna okay then you have to be able to draw a line considering the uh the direction in which the antenna is facing okay so now these are the four mechanisms that the non los uh propagation now you can see the four mechanisms right guys oh uh, yes sir okay so uh reflection is getting diffraction penetration so the penetration uh the signal can uh it's not surprising you see that uh see if you have a magnet okay uh then you know that uh you can feel the it's uh, the existence of its influence around uh you hold another piece of iron another magnet or another piece of iron around somewhere else you still feel force on it now if you put something in between say uh your notebook okay between the two magnets you still feel force the full uh, the force will reduce to some extent but you still have some force on the on the magnet on the other side so it means that the field the magnetic field is pen is penetrating your your notebook <coughs> so the field can penetrate so since the electromagnetic wave is a combination of the fields electric and magnetic fields they can penetrate i mean the wave itself can penetrate so however it loses energy as it penetrates if it if you have a thicker wall then you have a weaker signal uh, at the other side so this is why normally when you go far inside deep deep inside a building you don't have good signal okay but i mean there is i mean there is uh, penetration help you get the signal some uh, the i mean somewhere inside but uh, there is penetration loss i mean there is a loss of power on the way okay. so it can penetrate uh, through objects but losing some power uh, sir, yeah yeah, yeah. So, sir uh, we are actually starting from electromagnetic wave okay so mm -hmm. what are the backgrounds i mean we do need to uh, start this or some in the reflection uh, the diffraction do you do you need to know about all of this i mean i have skipped some of them in high, high, higher level uh, high school 
Okay. Uh, what are the prerequisites? See, of this? see uh, I have a um, quick presentation, uh, or I mean, separate lectures for each of them. Like, first of all, I have a presentation called the title is electromagnetic wave. Okay. So that will be. Uh, that will be enough. No, no, I mean, nothing is enough here. Okay, yes, uh, there is a, uh, no limit for anything, you know. Ah, so, yes, yes. Then I also have separate presentations for each of these four mechanisms. Yeah, yes. Okay. So, but uh, none of these presentations, I would say, is enough. We have to accommodate everything. We have many different things to discuss here. Uh, so we'll try to have in the, I mean, you, you, I told you in the beginning that this course will, uh, the way I have designed, uh, will probably help you get a clear, uh, uh, an overall idea, okay? overall idea about how things are really going on around in the industries, okay, commercially, how things are working. So you, you get an overall idea. So you feel comfortable with oh, yeah. the communication world. Yeah. Yes. And I things are, uh, and uh, uh, to be frank with you, I have, uh, I, in this course will always be in touch with the industry, uh, I mean, um, industry processes. And uh, most of the academicians can't can't present like that. Okay, uh, I have some experience with the U.S. industries, mm -hmm. uh, and that's why I I can do it. Okay, so how things are uh, how things are developing over there, how things are deployed over there in the industries, not in the academia. Oh, yes. I have some real experience, and uh, I use that here in my courses. Okay, so oh, it will be like, uh, like uh, say, if I, if we tell you that it uses the say toughness power here. So if you ask me, okay, then for this application, how much power it uses for the transmitter? When it transmits, what is the typical? range of power there, I can tell you that. Okay. What are the typical values of different parameters, how things are really set in the, uh, in, the in, the, in, the, in the in the commercial deployment, okay? I do have experience, I have seen how, I mean, what are the values people use that in the industry, okay? That people cannot learn from academia, okay? So, that's the key reason for this course to be different, okay. I mean, this is just the beginning. Uh, by the end of the course, you'll feel that it is different from all the courses you have taken so far, and you will be taking. Okay, I mean, my courses will be different. Okay, it will be. Okay, anyway, <clears throat> so reflection. <clears throat> you know, I mean, you know what it is, uh, but it it can help you. Get the power. Uh, I mean, you know, I mean, have, have your signal propagating. Like if you are say around something, if you are on the other side of uh, of a small hill, okay. So a large building may I mean, the signal cannot penetrate that that small hill, okay. So through penetration, you don't receive any power. But there may be a building, a uh, large building somewhere, which uh, re is reflecting signal, and you get significant power. Okay. So you may argue that the power may be very low. Well, in the case of wireless communication, the power is always very low. But you are not transferring power. It doesn't have to be energy efficient. You just need to receive the bits. That's it. It has to be barely enough that allows you to retrieve the bits, okay, 
the ones and zeros. That's it. So the power can be very low if you are still able to recover. It's fine. Okay. Let me give you an example. Since I have told you about the power, this is power. How low the receipt power can be, and it 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 still works. Okay. Wireless com communication is very interesting. See, uh, see the norm, <coughs> the transmitting power at the cellular base station may be like um, say one watt, uh, thirty dBm means uh, one watt of power. Okay. It varies, but it may be transmitting 30 dBm. If you know what it is, 30 dBm, uh, then you can convert. The power is 1 watt. Okay. But when you receive it, it can be very low and it is still working. It can be minus 60 dBm, minus 70, minus 80, minus 90, or even minus 100 dBm. And if you still, your calls can be up even when you are receiving minus 100 dBm power. And if I consider minus 90 dBm, then it is 10 to the power minus 9 milliwatt. Okay, that is the power you are receiving. That is the power, um, uh, I mean, you have captured in your phone. 10 to the power minus 9 milliwatt. Okay this much power you are receiving. Just imagine how low it is. And imagine how much, uh, how a small fraction of the power you have, you are receiving. The trust me, power was not that low, one watt, okay. But you are receiving one billionth of the transmit, transmit power. Your phone is capturing just one billionth of the of the transmit power. So and it is still working. Your calls are up. Okay, you are doing a lot of things on your phone. So that's why things work. All these phenomena uh, can help you get a get very small amount of power and that is sufficient for our purpose okay when we don't need any bulk power transfer we just need barely enough power for the information transfer okay okay so the reflecting object uh, if it is large then you know large amount of power will be transmitted also the type of object whether it is i mean how smooth it is definitely matter the amount of reflection <laughs> then scattering uh, it's like uh, you when you have say if you consider leaves of the trees okay uh, so these are uh, trans scattering power or dispersing the electromagnetic wave in in many different directions or if you have a surface which is rough not smooth then then the signal when it is incident on the surface will be scattered will be dispersed in main different directions small small uh, signals will be uh, just uh, coming out from the surface in main different directions that's called scattering okay so a little different from reflection so this scattering object can be foliage I mean leaves of the trees the street sign, lamp post, etc. Okay, but it can still help you uh, to reach the receiver. Uh, some amount of power can get to the receiver. Diffraction, as I was saying, that uh, probably, uh, I mean, your physics course uh, gave you some good explanation of diffraction. I mean, at the, at the sharp edge, uh, new uh, sources are created. Many, uh, a good number of small sources are created at the sharp edge, and new propagation starts from there. 
So that's how you can actually go behind, behind something, so behind this object, okay? Uh, so it's like bending uh, signal, okay? But uh, um, as I told you before, I'll have separate slides for each of them. Uh, now, uh, the key reason for me to uh, introduce this uh, LOS, non-LOS, and word, these three types of uh, communication in the beginning, uh, is to help you get a basic uh, comparison among them. We, I told you before that, uh, I mean, we, um, I, once again, I'm repeating that I'm trying, I mean, you'll be prepared for the, for the industries in this course. So when you uh, think of the deployment, then you have to, as an engineer, select the right option. So you'll uh, a lot of times find different options ahead of you and you have to select. Uh, so you need to know the, uh, um, I mean, the re relative comp advantages and disadvantages. <laughs> now you see, for uh, word, I mean, all this, uh, uh, Comparisons will not be clear at this stage, but we'll uh, just skim through it. Okay. Uh, the connection is dedicated. The transmitter and the receiver is connected through a wire, and nobody else can intervene. Okay. You, I mean, you, your transmitter sends the signal to just one receiver at the other end when it is wired connection. You have a particular user connected. So it is a dedicated communication path. So is true for LOS. Because I said that the transmitter and the receiver have to face each other. Have to face each other. Meaning that your transmitter, I mean, your transmitter cannot face multiple receiving antennas, right? If you are strictly facing the receiving antenna, then you are definitely facing only one antenna and so it must be a dedicated communication again okay between the two but in the case of non LOS you're not facing so it is shared like the base station in the cellular communication is transmitting for so many people in the cell your Wi-Fi router is transmitting for all the users at home so you all are sharing the transmit power, sharing what the transmitting guy is sending. Now, when you are transmitting using word, you are sending signal, okay, it's dedicated, it is guided to the other signal. So there will be very small amount of power loss on the way. And so the receiving signal will be strong okay so because it has been guided well up to the end up to the receiving end okay so you receive a strong amount a strong power level of signal but in the case of LOS you trust me you launch the power in the air so the signal is uh, you don't I mean it's not like in the wire, you just put it in the, in the, say, it's like a pipe, okay, the wire. So the wire uh, doesn't, I mean, you have a small attenuation, but the attenuation is very low. But here, you don't, I mean, the signal, you don't, uh, uh, I mean, disperse it somewhere. But in the case of LOS, to some extent, the signal disperses because you are launching using an, an antenna. Antenna. So, give me a second, please. So, as he, uh, uh, whenever you you as you use an antenna, you have the signal goes to different directions, at least to some extent. Okay? 
In the case of LOS, since you know the location of the receiving antenna, you try to confine the radiated power in the air as much as possible. You try to confine, but it is not till completely confined. Okay, but it is uh, pretty well confined. So since it is well confined, it is little dispersed. You get signal which is weak, weaker than wired case, but stronger than non LOS case non LOS or N LOS okay case because they are the power you disperse widely and that you do deliberately at the transmitting antenna because you sh you'll be sharing this power with many different people in the okay say consider the base station cellular base station all the people in the cell will receive the power so the base station transmits over a wide range okay. so people in different directions uh, can listen so you heavily disperse deliberately at the from the transmitting end <coughs> now when you are dispersing your transmit power then you know the power will will be weaker gradually okay you are dispersing so uh, the density will not be that much so when you receive the signal all the users will be receiving but the signal level will be weaker that's why i mean i gave the example that the uh, you may receive just one billionth of the transmit power the third point in the third point is interference okay and these things will be better clear okay uh, as you go through the course the third point is interference when some other signal is also getting to your receiver okay. that's unwanted but you have them see in the case of word you almost don't have it because signal I mean the outside signal for the outside signal it is very difficult to get inside the wire okay. for the LOS case it is in everything is in the air so it is possible that some other signal it is but if you consider that everybody is using separate frequencies then well you should not have normally however what you may do you may have least some frequency you have some some permission to use some frequency range so that you may be using in different LOS establishments <coughs> you may have multiple <coughs> LOS setup and you're using the same frequency range there since all this setup is just well confined okay one setup should not have okay I mean much of the power of one setup does not get to another setup because you are confining well okay so but there may be still some power going to some other setup somebody else may be using some frequencies close to yours it's coming to you so since it is here you will have some interference uh, but not too much now think about the non LOS case what happens you yourself maybe I mean you have some frequency range for uh, I mean permitted for use and you are using it many in many different base stations but these base stations are transmitting power over a wide range over a wide range to support many users around so one base station will actually send some power to another base station too although that's not uh, desired but that will happen while covering its own users around uh, it, it can't stop its signal and some signal will get to another cell and that's how in the system there will be many base stations interfering themselves 
so when you are dispersing widely there is no easy way to stop the interference you'll be you'll have so on one side you have weaker desired signal on the other side you have stronger <coughs> undesired signal and the ratio of these two is sinr the fourth point desired signal over undesired signal is called signal to interference plus noise ratio okay sir we will we'll, we'll have more. yeah mm -hmm. yeah when we are talking about interference so uh, when you disperse the signal sir uh, there are lots of surfaces in the region so doesn't it interfere with uh, itself i mean the uh, suppose a signal is reflecting from a uh, building and another signal is reflecting from the opposite building and they are interfering with each other doesn't that happen i mean it's a other definitely Oops. definitely it does Isn't happen it a problem yeah that's the that's the best question uh uh in the class today definitely yeah you are absolutely right that's why uh non los case creates an environment which is called multi path environment a particular signal gets to the receiver through many different versions of it okay you'll have many different versions of the signal uh via all the four mechanisms and these signals uh work uh, uh i mean they are uh inter they interfere each other but only when they are not time aligned okay. i mean this different multi multipath take different delays mm -hmm. when the delays are different then they interfere okay we we'll later show we we'll later show that the, it is called intersymbol interference isi but if two versions arrive at the same moment then it is not yeah. interference then yeah. you sum up the signal sum up yeah okay then you are summing up the signal Th that will be advantageous for you mm -hmm. but intersymbol interference can be problematic for you okay yes, however I however there are some mechanisms which can combine uh some of the uh versions which are time delayed okay which should not time aligned constructively some advanced receivers can do that and every receiver can do that to some extent but advanced receiver can do that more constructively then you still get benefit out of it okay it is not instead of creating problem you still have more power okay okay yes, anyway so is i na okay now the uh, next point is available bandwidth well see uh, you have um see in the in the non los case okay let's give you the the worst example first uh the bandwidth the i mean since you have this interference problem you yourself interfere another the another base station the way, one of the ways to solve is to split whatever frequency range you are permitted okay and then once base station will use a part of it i mean we'll look at it in more detail later but uh, i'm sorry i'm just reiterating it but uh, this is a very quick comparison that we need to i mean that will help us uh, in the later discussions so but it is too early to have this comparison so i'll just have a, i'll be hinting only now okay so so it splits the available bandwidth and allocates to different base station in the neighborhood in the among the nearby base stations okay so the other base stations around yourself will have different frequency ranges okay then again repeat 
whatever you are using in your base stations will be repeated at a base station but that is little bit far so that's how you uh, mitigate the interference but as you split your available bandwidth you get a smaller share of the bandwidth so it's lot of lots of challenge also there i mean other many other people will also be using the air so they will have their own frequencies so that's how you have you are getting very restricted about how much bandwidth you can get okay the air is for everybody and you are using this resource this common resource okay the air so you'll get a very small share of uh, your frequency range okay and this bandwidth directly actually linearly impact your data rate you have larger bandwidth you have okay like uh, in bangladesh the major mistake of the policy makers is that they i mean they have made some uh, i mean the policies are like the cellular operators cannot afford enough bandwidth okay so if they if the uh, government could relax and the operators could lease more bandwidth then we the customers would be benefited our data should be a lot higher just this way it could be made three times four times five times higher okay so we'd get the benefits the revenue would also increase for the government uh but uh, they don't i mean uh, this uh, hard policies doesn't help anyway it's not like i mean it's all in the the air is open right you have all the frequencies available for free why don't why just leave them idle why you don't you, i mean you, you if it was used you could get benefit out of it okay it's not like it's not like your natural gas or coal okay that you, if you don't allow people to use it then you can preserve it for future use no so there's no point to make hard policies here the policies could be i mean you could make these things very cheap so that the operators could afford okay no i am not advocating don't uh, think that uh, i have received bribes from them but that's the reality okay so the bandwidth is uh, now for los communication since you are confined okay so a large share people many people will will be able to use the same frequencies because you are confining your radiated power okay so you are not uh, interfering so if you use the large bandwidth okay it is not uh, disturbing others okay so i have it but in the case of wired i mean you can even see in the case of optical fiber it is in the order of terahertz very large bandwidth you can use you have dedicated communication the wire has some capability maximum capability that will restrict the max uh, the upper limit of your frequency okay so you have wide band so extremely large now the final point actually that that's the final point here really the other points are the points below are different aspects the data rate how much data is so that's the crucial outcome so the data depends on primarily on available bandwidth and sinr these two things as we later show in shannon's capacity formula these two things affect how much bandwidth and how much sinr so if you have now you see that in the wired case you have very wide high sinr because sinr is the ratio of received signal and interference So it's not very high. Bandwidth is very good. So very good data rate, extremely high data. For LS case, bandwidth is compared to non-LS case is higher. 
is somewhere in between for both SINR and bandwidth. So the data will also be well placed in the middle. And non LS case is the worst case. Okay. So non LS case is the is the worst medium for us. Quality of service, okay, these things are again you'll see that I mean uh, will be easier to maintain for the hard case and LS case, okay. It's dropping somebody else overhears your signal, okay. In the word case, they cannot. Okay. They don't. They cannot. I mean, you have dedicated communication within the wire. So I can do the. In the LOS case, it is in the AR. Signal is in the AR. So there are chances, but slim chances. Chances because your conf, you, your power is confined within the region. But in the non-LOS case, you are dispersing your signal. You're just releasing it to. You're leaving it open to everybody. Okay, so unless you have some special measure, everybody can hear the signal. So unless you have some special measure, they'll also be able to retrieve the bits. So is dropper uh, better? Okay, but we'll later address these things. Installations, okay, um, it can be cheap or expensive. It depends. It depends. Okay, which one will be cheaper? Uh, depends. Uh, so that there are main different types for all these types of established installations for all of them. Okay, so so it's not easy to compare at this point. Okay. Now, as we have seen so far, the third column gives you the worst performance. So why? we go for it okay and uh, in this course mostly we will address the third column non los case and uh, cellular communication is uh, is my actual focus and uh, that's an example of non los communication so as i said that i offer a course dedicated on cellular communication in the next semester. So, but you, you can see that is the it is everything worst. So why we go with it? We just drop it. We should just drop it, right? But um, Custom. we don't do that. But you cannot drop it because because you know there will be exam in the different media exam, final exam classes, and <laughs> say that I'm co I'll be covering non LS case, so you can't drop it. <laughs> you so most of the it. questions will be in LS. I mean, wireless. Uh, yeah. So, <laughs> Do you expect yeah. more, more questions from that part? Yeah, sorry, yeah, definitely. definitely. Is implementation in real life, sir? So is yeah. implementation in real life, sir? Is it significant, yeah. sir? Like, is it important? But why? Why you implement it in real life? Is the Problematic one. Yeah, okay. So so that's the last, the point. last option, mobility. Yeah. You don't support mobility with the other thing. Cost? Right? Is it the cost? <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, I mean, the installation cost, yeah, the maintenance cost can be also, can matter. But that depends on the topology of your uh, deployment. I mean, how things are set up. Okay. So, so anyway. So the key point is that you can move when you are not connected. Okay, in the first two cases you cannot move. So at the when you are a human user or this type of user, some automated devices also when you, are, you want to support mobility, then that's the only option. And this uh, be, is becoming a requirement in many applications. Okay. But at the last part of your communication network, okay, at the final part, at the last segment of your communication part, you need this option. But in there are many other segments in the whole communication. We'll have a uh, presentation in our first lab class. We have a lab class this afternoon. Okay, so I'll have a 
presentation there. I mean, uh, a presentation from YouTube to help you get a, an idea about how the whole communication network forms. So you are, uh, you are telling that uh, for a complete, uh, complete transmission of our uh, data, there are maybe many segments which uses different, uh, which yeah. uses both the wire, yeah. the LOS. Like you, you may be talking to your friend uh, in USA. Oh, yes. So there are many segments on the way. There are but many at the segments. last part, you are connected to a base station. You are using your cell phone. So only in this last part, when you are connected mm -hmm. to a base station, you are using non LOS case. Mm -hmm. So you can move, move. you can roam around. Okay. Oh. But for the other segments, you don't care. So in oh. the other segments, it will be either word, preferably word. If mm. not possible word, then it will be made LOS. Mm. Now you got it? Yes, sir, yes. So they will prefer word. If word is not possible somewhere, it will be LOS. Okay. So, so, is yeah. the connection between two phone towers LOS, like two programming phone towers? It depends. It depends. Us, uh, discuss different things okay in our later okay any other questions no sir okay yes. so these early presentations are some basic things so which i will different times mention at, at different stages i'll be uh, uh, just uh, I'll cite different things, different examples, and all that. So uh, I need this idea uh, for you to have. Another uh, uh, the next presentation also has the same purpose. That uh, okay, see the. Last example, okay. Non LOS case has the most challenge. Okay. It's a oh, a second. Sir, one more issue. Can you address it? So today the attendance, sir. How will you take it? Uh, I thought Google Meet keep the record. Keep that record? Oh, it okay. doesn't? Uh, I don't know actually. Sir, as it far do? as I know, it doesn't, sir. It doesn't, sir, actually, yes, sir. Oh, really? Yes, sir. Oh, okay. Hmm. Sir, one more thing. You said lab is on today afternoon. Actually, the lab is on tomorrow, right? Oh, tomorrow, today... yeah, right. Right. Okay, so uh, sir, I had a small we... question, sir. Mm -hmm. uh, so when we're saying say n LOS, sir, right, sir. When, I, mm -hmm. when we see that multiple data are being transmitted between the station receiver and the transmitter, right, sir. In case of n LOS, right, sir. So yeah. Uh, so, so is it kind of like like the bandwidth is being shared by multiple data? Are we saying that? Yeah, yeah, it is like that. So it's like uh, between the transmitter and the receiver, the yeah. entire bandwidth is sh shared by different signals. Different people, yeah. But uh, un uh, unlike our normal LOS or wired yeah. case, where only a signal but, data but, is transmitted. But uh, I yeah. mean, uh, the answer will be. Uh, I'm, my next presentation will answer it uh, uh, more correctly. Okay, but um, if I have to take your attendance now, then I have to call each of you. So we can end today, sir. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow fresh or next day fresh, sir. Can you take that attendance. Yeah, maybe I consider everybody present today. Okay. Sir. So. Today, I just consider everybody present and from tomorrow. But uh, one of the reasons I, uh, I selected Google Meet, uh, I mean, I thought uh, there is a 
uh, sir, uh, sir there is a way i think sir like sir uh, in the right side you can see the menu and in the menu there is settings and from the host controls you can like turn on and off attendance tracking you can check it sir oh really okay so the three dotted line on the right side yeah yeah Mm. I don't see. Well, by the way, some of you did not use your ID last time. Uh, I'm not sure how it is today. Uh, your, you should please uh, include your ID in the in the way you appear here. Okay, so I can identify who is present and who is not. Okay, most of That's you I had it like that, but three or four people did not have ID in the display. What would you please consider if you are present uh, from the next class? Will be yeah, 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 but. Uh, uh, I thought I'm surprised there is no option like that. Okay, anyway, so in the next presentation, uh, I will. Uh, sir, yeah. Sir, uh, there is a browser extension that you can separately install. Uh, it is okay. available in the web store, Google Chrome store. So it is named, okay. the, I think, Meet Attendance. So if you install it, okay. it will automatically add the option to take the attendance. Okay. Okay. Just search. please send me. Then please uh, do me a favor. Send me a link of. This. Okay, sir. Then after the class, I can send you. Okay. Okay. Oh, Thank sir. you very much. Okay. Oh, okay. Then. Uh, oh, my presentation. Problem is, uh, I, I mean, when I go to the display, it is taking a different window. Sorry, but it's not taking me there. Wait. Sir, if you share the entire screen, then uh, that problem will be solved. Maybe you are okay. selecting to share a tab. OK. OK. Do you see the do you see the slides now? Yes, sir. Okay. Is it like is the title like currently developed cellular technologies? No, sir. Evolution of cellular technology. Hmm. See oh, how can I can we start a new thing tomorrow, sir? We don't have a lot of time left. Yeah.
then Zoom seems better. Yes, sir, it is. We'll start the next time. We'll go back to Zoom next time. Okay. Sir, you can check the link, sir, in the chat box. You have to install that one. Okay. So, well, anyway, we'll go back to Zoom next time because it's not uh, okay. Uh, okay, let's see. Okay, uh, now this first uh, this presentation discusses the evolution of cellular technologies. Uh, I need to discuss this part because I will be a lot of times, uh, as you say that, I mean, w we will be mostly discussing non LOS case because it uh, involves the real challenges, most of the real challenges. Wireless communication, we have to learn how it works. It takes care of different issues. And these issues mostly you find in non LOS case. Okay. So uh, the uh, the discussion uh, covers, uh, I mean, things are more comprehensively covered in non LOS case. And the most complex example of non LOS application is cellular technologies. So, to discuss different uh, techniques or methods, uh, when I give you examples, okay, mostly I'll have to give you examples from the cellular technologies. And uh, to mention this uh, te te technologies, it is better for me if you are familiar familiar with uh, at least. Are you, is anybody saying something? Sir, sorry to interrupt. We have class at ten thirty. Ten thirty. Okay, but I I, I think I have three three minutes. Okay, so I'll I'll finish in three minutes anyway. Uh, so if you are familiar with uh, the different generations. Uh, how because you you know that there are many different terms like uh, you also see at the on your phone different uh, symbols like G E 3G H plus 4G so what what they mean what uh, technology you are actually running okay so uh, we'll just touch base uh, on these things in our next class inshallah. Uh, uh, Ymax was there, okay, but later. I mean, these are the mainstream cellular technologies now nowadays. Okay, so my I uh, wrote the book on LT. Okay, uh, I mean this part. And uh, in the uh, cellular communication course, I now cover 4G and 5G. These technologies I cover. Okay, we'll go from here the next day. Uh, any questions? Yes, sir. A few, sir. Inshallah, sir. Next day I'll ask you, sir. But the, the other class now, sir. Okay, okay. Okay, then bye for now. Thank you, sir. Thank you for your time.